Hey, I'm Chris. I live in Las Vegas and I love guitars. So today, rather than reviewing a guitar or a keyboard, I am going to review one of my favorite pieces of gear in my studio. And I hope you dig it as well. So I'm going to have a little music playing in the background because it's totally pertinent to what I'm talking about today. Now you may ask, what is that anime sounding music in the background? Now when I hear my music, to me it sounds like it's the theme song of a kung fu anime. <laughs> With cheesy drum machines and guitar in the background. So when I hear this, I think of Goku getting ready to go fight a new supervillain, or Sailor Moon getting ready to fight somebody, or Card Captor Sakura trying to catch some clown cards. So, what you are listening to today is music that I've recorded on cassette tape. Now, I'm a big fan of the 1980s, and when it comes to the 1980s, everything was done on a cassette tape. So, again, everything was done on a cassette tape. Recently, I've been re-recording all my music on cassette tapes. I've got stacks of cassette tapes of ideas and songs that I've written over the years. Why cassette tape? Well, number one, it's analog. It's got a fuzzy sound. It's, it will retain that sound for years and years and years. Cassette tapes were made to last. And the funny thing about 80s gear is all of that stuff that was created in the 80s whether it be a television set, a stereo system, uh, a cassette tape, that stuff was made to last for freaking decades, man. I've got cassette tapes that are decades old that still sound just as cool and just as crisp as they did in the 1980s, dude. So as I'm going through this and I'm explaining all the features on it, you're gonna hear my music in the background. Some of the songs are happy and upbeat, some are kind of smooth and low tone, um, <laughs> very relaxed like R&B. So I hope you don't mind. So I'm gonna close up on the uh, Tascam Portasound Mach 2, and I'm gonna show you all the features on this guy. Okay. So. This is my Tascam, number three, Mach 2. Now, as cheesy as it is, I really, really love this uh, cassette player. Now, ooh, here are all the features on it. You're gonna have four different tracks that you mix into your cassette tape. This is your main volume. And these are the volumes of mic one and two. And when you want to mix mic one and two, you have to pick what track you're trying to plug in. Oh, it's gonna to go to song number two. So usually, I will mix something on track one, drum beats, bass, keyboard, whatever. And then if I add a lead or a vocal, I will use track two, three, and four. Now, there is a tricky way to get everything that you want on all of your tracks. <laughs> By the way, you could see how dusty this is, how long it's been in my collection, dude. You can basically, on track one, in order to save track space, um, record several different things. Like I, like I said, I record a bass, um, drums, and I will usually record a piano all on track one. And then two, three, four, I will record either vocals, um, a guitar lead or a guitar lead, and then I will mix it all together. Again, what you're hearing is track one. I can turn this down and then it's still going, but all of these are recorded on track one. And uh, just really quick, I'm recording all of these off of the Juno stage and I am putting it through a <laughs> loop pedal and then into my Tascam Portasound 3. So, let's bring back the music. So, first of all, how the features work, it's a regular tape recorder, but the thing is, every cassette tape, ah, so every cassette tape 
on the little tape that you see right there, there are four tracks of sound that are stacked on top of each other. And as you record something, each and every one of those tracks are laid on top of each other on that little analog magnetic tape. So, by the way, a really cool feature of the <laughs> port of sound, when you flip the tape over, it plays everything that you recorded on one side in reverse. So, if you're honestly gonna get freaky with it and write some music um, in reverse or some weird like, <laughs> or some weird hidden musics and sounds, you could totally do that on a port of sound or on any magnetic tape. You could write like uh, John is dead, you could record John is dead, you could record uh, Beatles number nine backwards over and over and over again if you've ever had a record and the record, the Beatles white album and spun that behind uh, like upside down and around and <laughs> backwards. You can hear funny hidden messages, right? So you could honestly do that with this. Actually, let me show you that. Hold on. Honestly, just so you can hear my music reversed. Let's see, here we go. By the way, I didn't put any hidden tracks in it. This is honestly just the song that I wrote and it's backwards. I actually dig that, dude. It's got a weird spin on it, a weird mix on it, but honestly, that sounds like my music. <laughs> okay, so. Before I start chanting to some ancient deity, let's turn this back, okay. All right. So, again, I will usually record something off of the keyboard. I will usually record something off of the keyboard, and then I will lay it on the tracks one, two, three, and four until it's one cohesive song. So, again, you're hearing everything off of track number one, and you will plug it into two sets of microphones. You either have microphone number one and two, and then you will usually click these little sliders down to basically save whatever you want or record on top of that track. So maybe at the end of this, I will record a, a brand new track so you can hear it all together. But so, again, I'm recording all of these on track number one. Ooh. Ooh, that's sensitive. Woo! Oh, that's a cable. Ha! The wonders of live video. <laughs> Anyways, you're gonna record all of your tracks one by one until you finish. So again, Record on number one, rewind. You're gonna record again on track number two. You're gonna rewind, record again on track number three, and then rewind, record again on track number four. This is how I slowly put together sounds and they cohesively turn into a song. <clears throat> oh, by the way, just so you see my songwriting style. Dun, dun, dun. Usually, ah, oh, that one's a new one. Let's see, usually I will just fiddle on my keyboard or on the piano. I usually just fiddle around on the piano and if there are any like specific melodies that jump out at me, I will play those over and over again. I will either dictate it on sheet music or I will write down the chord progression. So let's say your music gets a little stale it gets a little older and you want to do something different with it. Um, I found more than a couple of, uh, more than a couple of videos on YouTube about how to use chord progressions in a different way or use the most common chord progressions to get really, really good music. So lately, 
I've been writing songs in the formula one, five, four, six, one, three, four, six. All of these different chord progression combinations in different keys just to see what really jumps out at me. And I would love to share with you how I do that. <clears throat> so. Let's say I'm sitting down and I want to record something brand new. I will just put something together on my keyboard. And honestly, I was messing around with some uh, techno the other night. Maybe I could recreate what I was working at the other night. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Preset. Let's see. Eight, one. Hmm. Eight, one. Wait a sec. All right. Preset 821, come on. Ooh, I like that. Maybe coming a little closer. When did I hit that? Okay. Ooh, nice. I know I had some techno here. Trance, techno, here we go. Let's go to 516. Nice. I can go with that. So I'm laying tracks slowly on top of each other just to see what it sounds like. Let's see. Let's see. 540. Nice. So lay one track down and we're going to lay another track down on top. Ooh, I like that.
So three different tracks laid on top of each other and replayed in a cassette player. And all done on one keyboard. So the biggest goal of my music is to use old gear to play new music. And whether that's inspired by old gear, whether it's inspired by old beats, really doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is making quality music that I honestly love. And the funny thing is when you're using old gear, you're forced to learn how to work with it. You're forced to take your mind back into an older place and learn how to use older equipment and work in those older conditions with limitations. All of this would be super duper easy on top of a laptop, but honestly, I love stumbling over my own fingers. I love messing up a track and then have to rewind it all and start all over again. I love um, getting frustrated and then like scrapping that song and then redoing it and making a completely different song. As much as that makes some people crazy, I'm totally in love with that idea and that idea of creativity. So, again, you really want to put ideas together that work for you. So, my recent setup, again, I'm playing everything off of a Juno stage <clears throat> into a loop pedal right there. And then I am recording it all onto this guy on my, uh, Portis, my Portisound Mach 2. And then usually it will all come together. Oh, let's see. What song is this one? Oh, okay. Yet another <laughs> anime sounding song. And then all together on a tape recorder, all on cassette tape. And again, dude, I have got so many cassette tapes. I've got stacks of cassette tapes in my, uh, in, <laughs> in my collection. Just different songs, different ideas that can all come together at once. So <clears throat> I urge you, whatever gear you have, just put it all together and make some good music. Hugs, health, and happiness from Las Vegas. I'm Kitar Chris. <laughs>